Hello again everyone, this is Sloth with Sins Gaming. Today I'm going to be showing you how to dock, which involves several steps, which I will go through with you. First of which, you obviously going to, you're going to have to have a target in place. I happen to have gone ahead and put a target in position on the tutorial trainer. Now I'm using uh, for sake of saving time, I decided to use a sandbox, uh, but as soon as you have RCS thrusters and and a docking port, you can go ahead and start uh, this sort of setup. So I will go ahead and show you guys what we've got going on. So I'm going to go ahead and load my target one vehicle. now. This is the exact same vehicle that I sent up to use as a target. Now I've got a lot of boosters on this thing, a lot of fuel. I just wanted to make sure I could get this into extreme orbit. And this is the exact same vehicle I used uh, when training my teammates on how to dock. Now you can see I, I'm not even using a Kerbal in here. Uh, it's actually, let's see if I can show you. I've got one of the uh, Octo guidance systems. I also have batteries to make sure that it doesn't run out of power and a, a whole ton of, um, of uh, solar panels on this. You can see right here uh, our RCS system and also I included a hundred liters of RCS on this tank right here. Now one of the big things when developing an RCS equipped ship is you want to see the center of mass and you see how low the center of mass is on this and actually this isn't a good indication. I'll get rid of what we've got and actually I don't have this set up right at all. That would have been good to know. Okay so you see how the center of mass ball on this final vessel is where it's positioned. You want the RCS thrusters to be evenly spaced and I'll show you how it maneuvers without them being evenly spaced but with them being evenly spaced they would circle around it would perfectly rotate around that center of mass. Now with them being offset it's going to send the front end going farther around in the circle than the back end because the center of mass is so far back. This will change slightly as you run out of fuel through the system and eventually uh, it will rotate a little bit better, but I think this is pretty well good to go. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to attach to this that is an absolute necessity, not that, um, the absolute necessity that needs to be attached to this thing before liftoff is lights. One of the biggest problems when dealing with docking is being able to see your target. And if you can't see your target, obviously you can't hit your target. So I'm putting in just a minor light system up. I'm using some very simple system. There we go. That ought to light our way. And obviously I'm changing target one around a little bit. Let's turn the lights on, see what that looks like. Is that actually lighting up the ceiling? Indeed it is. And you can see it's lighting up our path. So I think we've got it covered. So now uh, we will go ahead and launch and get this thing in orbit. The reason why I'm using uh, the same vehicle and not constructing a new vehicle for this demonstration slash tutorial uh, is to ensure that I know it's going to work the first time. Now I already, like I said, I already put the target out there for us and I'll go ahead and launch. Always make sure you're toggled onto your SAS. That's the T key when you're launching, just to reiterate that for you. And SAS will guide any system that you have in place to right the ship. It'll put it back to the way you had it as 
as long as you're not giving control input. And even then, it will try and right the ship a little bit back towards the direction it came from. So if you look, you might actually be able to see the control surface is moving a little bit to keep the ship in line. Also, these thrusters uh, have a one degree gimbal on them, which allows them to vector the thrust in a direction to keep it upright. Now, if you've watched my moon landing tutorial, uh, you'll this will be uh, old news for you, but I'm going to reiterate all this as I go up. We're about to reach here 7,000. 7,000 meters is the minimum rollover, rollover altitude, but I go up to about 10 on average, and I go to the bearing of 90 and roll over to 45 degrees. As soon as I do that, I lock the SAS. Just tapping the F key, it'll reset, cycle the SAS to make sure you're locked in that position. At which point, I bring up all my controls and take a look at the orbital map. And I hover over my AP. As the AP climbs, I get up to 70,000 meters, slowly but surely. Luckily, with all those mainsail engines on that and enough fuel, you can see I've got quite a bit of fuel still. I make it up to 70,000, a little over, and cut. Now you'll see that altitude start to drop. That's because I am still in the atmosphere, which means it is causing a deceleration. If, you're not, if you have no acceleration or deceleration, that number really shouldn't change there shouldn't, if there's no forces acting on it. Now you can see an orbital path, and there's target one right there. That's what we're going to try and dock with. So we'll fast forward this. We'll warp it to the AP and once again what we're doing is we are going to a point in which we're going to be setting up an orbital burn. This is a suborbital arc that you're seeing here and which has the AP and no PE on it. So I will go ahead and commence the burn about 10 seconds away and you can see how I'm almost horizontal in my flight path to the surface closer you are the better but since I have no RCS on right now it won't turn for me you can hear me jamming on the key so I've got to use the thrust vectoring gimbal to move my ship towards the prograde as soon as I'm towards the prograde I go full throttle cycle my SAS and then let myself be corrected see I'm correcting my flight and doing my orbital burn just the way I want. Drop that down below the horizon line since the AP is so far away from me. There we go. There's the PE and cut engines. That's at 73,000. That's at 224. I could have fixed that a little bit more by dropping below the horizon line, but since I know my target is quite a distance out, I figured it wasn't a good idea. All right, so left click on your on the target you want set as target now you'll see the variance here right there and ironically it's right by the P -E and AP so this is a descending node this is your ascending node this tells you where you perfectly line up and where you want to perform an a an inclination burn. Inclination burn on your maneuver is shown here. It's the purple emblems. This is an up inclination, down inclination. To set and match the inclination, you position a maneuver right over. You set it right over the uh, DN or AN, which is ascending or descending node and you pull on either one of these. What you'll see is this will start to change. It's adjusting for it. What you got there? I'm going to keep it on the DN or AN as best you can until you can get it as close to zero as possible. There go. Looking good. There's zero, zero. All right. So, I could have done it over here, but for some reason I wanted to do it in this position. Okay, next step. 
we'll do this step by step. So we're resetting our inclination. See how that line is matching up? We're still on the inside. So we'll go ahead and fast forward to that point. We got 25 minutes here. Fast forward a little faster. And you'll see I'm orbiting just a little bit faster than my target right now. That's because I'm closer to the planet. It requires more speed to maintain your altitude the closer you are to the surface. No, 47 seconds. Now we can adjust. Actually, just for sake of ensuring ease of motion, I will go ahead and jettison these portions and fire my engine. Okay, we're all set. Now I have no inclined reaction wheel, so I actually have to turn on my SAS. Now you can see my or my RCS, I'm sorry. And you can see my RCS working. And to save RCS, which is monoprop, um, I'm going to turn off my SAS, which would automatically burn some of that fuel some of that monopropellant, which I don't want at this point. And I've got two seconds to find that marker. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go around. I'm over my mark. Okay, there we go. RCS off, SAS on, fire, fire, fire. Oop, oop, I'm way off my mark. There we go. Back on my mark, 14 seconds, full burn. Always make sure to have your resources panel up at the same time. It's very useful and you can even go down to stages where it's only going to show you the fuel that's active in the stage you're currently on. Now at this point that'll keep our keep your monoprop not showing and I just overshot. Why didn't you guys warn me? Alright, RCS. Let's flip back around and fix this. Second burn in this direction fix it and it's not going to put me right on the mark unfortunately but it should get me close enough now I'm burning more fuel than I want doing this but it gives you a good idea of some of the things that you can do that should be close enough let's take a look at our orbital map we're on point zero point four that's close enough we should be good okay so next we want to line up our AP with the PE so we're going to set another maneuver directly across or close to and we'll do a prograde burn until you see contact. See how it has two markers now? That means you're crossing over the orbital line. Now we want to get that as close to the PE as possible. There we go. And we're still a little bit off to go. Oh, oh. P. Now you see I'm maneuvering the, uh, I'm positioning the maneuver around as I go. Gently that back in. Close enough. Okay. Let's pull some of that power off a little bit more. You can see those contact points are a little too Not understanding P. Oh, it made an adjustment. Okay, that should be fine. That should work great. All right, so in 20 minutes, I will perform this burn and it will come into contact here. Now, what I'm doing is I'm ensuring a contact point with the orbit. This is the point in which I'm going to want to come into contact with the target. And you can see. That's target position. And then where I'm going to be when the target is here. Right now I'm going to be chasing it. It's going to keep getting closer and closer and closer. And I'll show you what that looks like. So 20 minutes I gotta warp through. Too close to the planet at this point. Warp any faster than that. Not a big deal. Now beyond these little 
little tutorials that I'm putting together for you guys. I'm also working with the Dark Multiplayer designer, um, the guy who developed Dark Multiplayer, the mod for being able to play this game together with others and actually interact with them. And I'm developing a graphical user interface, also known as a GUI, uh, for him and uh, his users. And specifically, I, I'm creating it for ease of use for myself, but also anyone who's interested in using it uh, can download it from our website, which I will post my the website uh, onto the link, onto the description. And uh, obviously that was a shameless plug and I don't care, but we are going to try and do some development. I've also got uh, calculators that'll tell you a, it'll give you a conversion between the liquid fuel amount that you have and how many seconds of burn you have left on board. And going ahead and bring our Hoover. That should be close. Yep, I overshot my mark. You can see two contact points now. But that's not a bad thing because we'll be able to see this move before this one which will give us an idea of how close we're going to get, and then we can adjust from here. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'll probably try and do screw up this maneuver, or screw up the contact so that you can see what to do in case of emergencies. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my RCS, because I want to save as much monoprop as possible, because that's going to be absolutely necessary when it comes to the close-up maneuver. All right, now you'll see the orange marker shift, and it became purple. There we go. That's close, but we're going to come back around. And it's kind of like if you think of NASCAR, or if you're ever racing someone, and you take the inside corner, you're always going, you're always going to be going a little bit faster than them because you're covering less distance. They're covering more distance in the same amount of time go okay wow that that is absolutely gorgeous okay so unfortunately that is almost too perfect but I will show you guys what it would be like if that didn't happen so I went around and you want to see these come into contact come as close as possible you see it's 25 kilometers of separation when you're in within 50 kilometers of separation this changes from orbit to target velocity, which gives you an idea of how fast you're closing with the target. You want that once you, I'll show you as we go, but you want that to be very minimal, which means if you're very close to zero or if you're at zero as you, with your closing speed, that means you're in the exact same orbital plane as your target. And we'll show, I'll show you that as we go. But say that this was what we had, or we were going to seriously overshoot, uh, we can do a prograde or retrograde maneuver in this case, and you'll see, see how the purple separated there? Or actually, yeah, purple separating, whoa, whoa, wait a second, this can't be right, okay, try this again, it didn't look right at all. Oh, oh, I got it. Okay. This would be where we are if I came around and redid this maneuver. So let's put it here. There we go. Okay. So you'll see if I add power, separation will be greater. If I remove power, we're going to overshoot. But say if we want, if the target was behind us, what we would want is our orbit to be larger than the target's orbit, which would give us the ability to have them catch us, at which point we would want the orbits to come closer to matching uh, at, I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. We would try and match orbit as soon as we'd get it closer to here. So we'd have it try and catch us. Once we saw that the next loop around was going to be an overshoot, then we would adjust our orbit accordingly to get those as close as possible within 50 kilometers. Preferably 
25, which I have here. Ironically, it worked out to be the best. So I'm going to go ahead and warp. See how that one swapped as well. And you'll see us start to close between the two orbits. And we'll have to perform a high speed burn. OK. And any moment now, oh, I'm 83 kilometers away still. So you'll see this swap as soon as we make it to 50 kilometers away. Right there. There it is. 46 kilometers there. And it's showing me my closing speed to the target. So we're going to wait to do any sort of maneuver until we get closer. So let's get close to this target point. And you'll see the speed to target changing there. There we go. And see, this is where the target would be as I came around again. So we don't want that to happen. So we'll swap to stage. And we'll start closing with the target to within a couple kilometers. So we'll turn our RCS on, SAS off, maneuver this thing around. You see that prograde marker? We're going to want to get that prograde marker over the target marker, which is this purple emblem. The other purple emblem that you, that you see is the, uh, the, the opposite direction of the target. Retrograde is what you're going to want on that. So we're actually, we're just going to slow ourselves down in relation to the target. Just to ensure that we get the best possible target placement. Okay. So now we're 13 meters a second in comparison to the target. And you'll see that our orbits closed with each other. Pretty cool, huh? So, okay. Now, we're going to put our reticle, since we're so low in speed in, re in uh, relation to the target, we'll turn our RCS off and we'll throttle up in direction of the target. And we'll start seeing our prograde emblem come over top of the target. Now, if we wanted to move closer, more quickly, past it a bit, go, and kill it. All right, now we're closing at 84, meter, 84 meters a second towards the target, and we'll want to get that as close as humanly possible. Well, not that, not that close, not at 86 meters per second. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll warp ahead. Okay, now we're getting the marker there. All right, closing rather quickly. Now we're doing 108 meters per second because of our orbital change. Turn on RCS. We're going to face our retrograde now to slow ourselves down. We're closing with them rather fast and we'll be on top of the target in less than uh, 120 seconds, so two minutes. So we're going to slow ourselves down by facing retrograde and firing. I'm going to slow it down to about 50 meters a second. Go. And we'll go ahead and warp. There we go. Seven kilometers. Okay. Now, if we. To get the ship traveling in the direction of the target, the, the reticle shows us where the ship is pointing. The retrograde marker shows us the direction, the opposite direction of which the ship is traveling, and the target retro marker shows us the direction to face to be perfectly pointing away from the target. So we want the retrograde marker to be over the retro target. To do that, we go away. We put this in between the retro target marker and our reticle, and we fire kill go yeah I got it closer there just a little bit more oh, oh, oh. bad maneuvering on my part kill that okay so now we're closing at 14.5 meters a second flip back around I'm down to my half my RCS which is not a good thing but for me I think I'll do just fine with uh, 50 liters of RCS actually probably about 40 because I know how to handle this engine all right, let's put some closing speed a little bit faster on this thing since we're still four kilometers away. There we go. 25 meters a second. Kill the engine. Kill the RCS just for good measure. And we'll start closing a little bit faster. Now we'll get this within a kilometer. And we'll see the kilometer marker change to meters. 
We'll get as close as we can. Then we'll slow ourselves down in relation to the target again. Just to make sure we don't hit the thing or overshoot, because overshooting is a waste of fuel, and hitting the thing is just going to destroy both the target vessel and you. There we go. All right, let's slow ourselves down again. So now, I'm going to no, I'm not going to use my RCS. I'm going to flip myself around with my RCS, but I could actually slow myself down with the RCS if I wanted to. Probably a bad idea, seeing as how I'm so low on it right now. Okay, seven meters a second. That's almost perfect. All right, now I could just kill the engine at this point but that's not going to be beneficial to me. So, flip my RCS back on, put myself towards the target. I want to save as much RCS as possible. I'm down to 40. Okay. So, let's do a slight burn towards the target. There we go. Flip towards the target some more. Point our reticle towards it. And now, Maneuvering thrusters, the RCS, reaction, reaction control system. I'm going to slow myself down with the reaction control system, which is done with the N key, is a retrograde RCS burn. There we go. Okay, so now I can explain the RCS controls. RCS controls are as follows. J and L move you left and right. They don't turn you, they move you left and right. That's called translation, left and right. K and I move you up and down, also known as translation. Up and down, it's not a rotation, it's a translation. It's like strafing in, a, in any other video game. Then, your A, S, W, and D keys do your standard rotation. It'll turn your ship. Just like that, okay? Then you've got the Q and E, which will rotate, which will uh, spin your ship. Okay. So, we will go ahead and position ourselves. Oh, crap. We're down to 20 liters of fuel. RCS. This is a bad thing. Okay. So, we're going to try and position ourselves to dock with the target. And you see we're only moving 0.6 meters a second, and our orbits match. Alright, so as we slowly rotate around, because I'm saving RCS, I could turn on the SAS. SAS will auto will autocorrect this rotation. It will not autocorrect translation, because it doesn't know. And it shouldn't know, because we want it to slip from one side to the other very slowly. All right, so we're going to do a slight RCS maneuver here and put ourselves closer to the target. Also, I'm going to change this to chase view, which will put us in relation to... Oh, there we go. It'll put us in direct relation to the ship as shown on the nav ball. And now you're seeing our docking port. I'm flying the exact same ship. Rotation, rotation, come on. Rotate, there we go. Wrong key. Alright. There we go. Alright. Still slipping away from the target by a little bit here. Oh, man. See, I should have put more fuel on this thing, and I should have a reaction control wheel. Reaction control wheels allow me to maneuver the ship within its own frame of reference, essentially meaning it doesn't translate the ship, but it allows me to rotate it without burning RCS, which would be highly beneficial at this point. So I'm going to have to turn on the SAS. You'll see me start burning fuel, but I need it to be able to adjust for some of the problems I have with this setup. There we go. Okay, now. 11. Good. Down, down, down. Now you see, when I hit the I key to drop my nose, it starts rotating as well. 
see me start to rotate there that's not good that's not something you want to see so SAS will actually auto help auto correct for that there we go okay now we want to slowly start moving towards the target and kill the SAS I'm burning fuel I only have seven seven liters of SAS still so I'm actually going to do a little bit of a warp because I don't want to move very quickly at this point you see my prograde is very close to my target see me start to close with it all right now I need to perform a burn all right over just a little bit there, there we go okay still closing with the target in less than a meter a second now ironically this is kind of what the what NASA missions would do they would close at an excruciatingly slow rate just to ensure no collisions occur where they don't want them to all right so now I'm slipping in underneath the target so SAS back on for just a moment go there closing just a hair at a time we're just lining up those docking ports you don't have to have it perfect but you do have to have it close go surely and there we go there's a dock oh almost there we go and now you see the dock I didn't even use my lights look at that would have been nice to see me illuminate there and I could actually steal RCS from this and I while I've got the moment got the time here I'll show you what it takes to transfer fuel I'm already sharing electricity you can see it glitching out a little bit there but you can see my low fuel numbers and you can see the fuel numbers in this tank now it won't reflect on this end because this reflects all fuel all electricity throughout the entire vessel and because they're docked they are technically the same vessel now so to transfer fuel very simply you hold the alt key you right click and you do the same on the one you want to transfer to or from either way and you just click the in on the one you want to transfer to and it'll transfer fuel between from one to the other so on and so forth very simple and you can do the same thing with RCS you can transfer on a prop from one to the other in my server I do the same thing I instead I put a station in orbit with a ton of fuel in our and monoprop on it uh, for long duration missions and I will show you'll see some of this in some of the videos that I've got um, one of the videos coming up will be a Duna mission that I will be doing collaboratively with uh, with greed and he will be uh, essentially tagging along I'm gonna have him do some mission critical stuff um, but actually we're just going to share uh, the taxi to Duna essentially and that I'm going to be piloting so um, I hope you guys found this beneficial um, the only other thing I'll leave you with is how to undock it's very simple you can you uh, right click on your docking port and undock and uh, actually this is the wrong vessel which is also a benefit so uh, your square bracket keys which is just to the just to the lower left side of your backspace you can ch you can change target you can change your uh, controlled vessel as long as you were in control of them at one point so then RCS back this thing away and away we go so I hope you found this beneficial um, if you have any questions please let me know visit my website go to my forum um, if you have any questions or uh, want to see some of my other tutorials um, be sure to like and subscribe and as always I'll catch you guys later